Hey guys, it's Caroline and today I'm gonna to be sharing 10 things about life in Italy that are quite different from life in the USA. Number one is that we actually dry our laundry on a laundry line. We never use dryers. When I would do my laundry in America, it might take an hour or two to get it all done. But in Italy, I have to dry my laundry out on the line and it usually takes a day or sometimes two depending how sunny it is. In Italy, electricity is just way more expensive. Laundry just takes a lot longer to do here, but I'm okay with that. Number two is that we actually divide our trash in Italy. So there's a spot for the plastic, there's a spot for the glass, there's a spot for the paper. Everything has its own bin and we have to divide it. It's the law, so if you don't divide your trash, the trash collectors actually will not take it. So you can't just put everything in the same bin and then assume someone will divide it for you. If it's not divided, they're not gonna take it. So you're just stuck with your trash. I'm totally used to that now and I actually think that's so much better for the environment. But in the US, we divide our plastic, glass, and paper, but like all of our food and everything else kind of just goes in one bin. So number three is that our phones work completely different here. In the US, I had like a phone plan and it would be a set amount of, of data and call time and messaging and stuff like that um, every month, I think. So in Italy, we do something called topping up, which is adding money to our phone cards. So we start with a basic phone card, and whenever you want to use more minutes or use more internet or whatever, you just go and add money to that at a tobacco shop. So we actually don't go to the phone store, we go to a tobacco store where they sell cigarettes and they will add money onto our phone card that way. If I don't stay on top of checking how much credit I have left, sometimes I just won't be able to make a phone call all of a sudden or I won't be able to use my internet. And that can be really frustrating sometimes because when you're like in a dire situation or you need to call somebody and it's an emergency and all of a sudden your phone's not working and maybe the tobacco shop is closed and you can't add money to it right away. And that's something actually I think is worse over here compared to the US. Number four, bidets. Some of you might know what a bidet is. It's like a little fountain in the bathroom where you clean your private. So in Italy, that's normal, that's completely part of the culture, but in America, you'll never see a bidet anywhere. I think they're super awesome. Sometimes you don't have time to take a full shower, but you still need to freshen up. So number five is actually snacking. So in the US, in our culture, it's like so normal to snack. If you walk down a grocery store aisle, I'd say 90% of the things they're selling are snack foods or snack related foods. Snacking is a huge part of our culture, but in Italy, people don't really snack. Like they have their three main meals a day, and if anything, they might have one small snack in the afternoon, but most Italians don't graze throughout the day. But for me, it's something I'm so used to growing up with that, and I actually really like snacking, so. I think we're doing well in America. Number six, if you ask anyone living outside of the US, the stereotype is pretty common that Americans like to drink and they like to drink a lot and they like to drink to get drunk. So there's a difference between drinking and happening to get drunk, but you're just like enjoying the night and whoops, all of a sudden you had too much alcohol and then drinking with the intention of getting drunk, where you're taking like hardcore shots, trying to get down as much alcohol as you possibly can. In Italy, we have more of a slow drinking culture, so you might go out for an aperitivo before dinner and have a cocktail with some snacks, and then after the aperitivo, you go to dinner and you'll order a bottle of wine or maybe two, depending how long the dinner is, and then after dinner, you might go out for drinks again. The set intention is to have fun, be with your friends, have good conversation, have good food, have good wine. It's never like the mindset of I'm gonna get so messed up. In America, I didn't really get to experience the drinking culture too much since I did move here when I was 19, but I've gotten little snippets of it and I do have siblings who are quite close in age to me, so I've gotten all the scoop from them and I can pretty much confirm that there is a huge drinking culture, especially in college. Number seven is actually the most interesting difference to me. So in American culture, it is very common to diagnose ADD, ADHD, and I'm not saying mental health isn't important. I think it is so incredibly important, but I will say that I think American culture has a whole different idea around diagnosing those things. And it was really shocking to me to find out that ADD and ADHD in Italy, for example, it's like non-existent. If a kid is misbehaving or not paying attention or something, the last thing on their mind is to medicate him. And instead in America, like teachers will call parents and tell them, your child's not paying attention in class, 
please medicate them. Adderall, which is the most common ADD, ADHD drug in the US, is illegal here. And if Adderall is illegal in Italy, um, what, like, why? I don't know. I mean, there has to be a reason for that. I think part of it is that it's highly addictive and people get really reliant on it but it's something I never really thought of or questioned when I was living in the US. I just thought that was normal. But I think it is healthy to question the differences in norms between cultures. Number eight is that in Italy we use the metric system, but in America we use the imperial system. So the imperial system are things like feet, miles, pounds, cups, quarts, tablespoons, and the metric system uses things like centimeters, meters, kilometers, kilograms. I have basically had to learn to convert all of the imperial measurements in the US to the metric measurements in Italy, and I'm still working on that, honestly. I don't know if I'll ever get used to the metric system. When I'm cooking, I use American measurement things like cups and tablespoons and things like that. So, I don't know, man. I don't know. Number nine is similar to number eight and it's that we use Celsius in Italy instead of Fahrenheit. So if someone says, oh, it's like 30 degrees, it's so hot, I'm like, what? That's cold. Trying to convert Celsius to Fahrenheit, it's hard for me. I still haven't taught myself how to do the math in my head. It's been five years and I'm still struggling with that. Number 10 is something that I think is amazing about Italian culture and life here in Italy and it's the fact that Italians walk everywhere. You walk to work, you walk to get your groceries, you walk to get your kids at school, you walk to get a coffee, you walk to breakfast, lunch, and dinner, you walk literally everywhere. When I'm home in America, we take our car everywhere. Like if we're just driving across the street, we're gonna take the car, even if it's 70 degrees out in beautiful weather and you could easily walk the car goes where you go unless you're walking around a lake or in a park or something you don't walk so that pretty much wraps it up guys if you enjoyed please give it a like that really supports my channel and i seriously seriously appreciate it and subscribe so you don't miss any of my future videos i will see you guys next time ciao for now whoa